This broadcast of In Focus is being made possible through the support of Reed Health. Reed Health, right beside you. And by First Bank Richmond, with eight locations serving Wayne County. First Bank Richmond and you, doing great things together. Welcome to In Focus on WGTV Channel 11. We have a, a chance to speak with Brenda McLean, co-owner of Hometown Media Group, which encompasses the Nettle Creek Gazette and the Western Wayne News. Thanks for taking some time and, and speaking with me. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Yeah, this is a great opportunity. Um, let's let's kind of go back to the beginning of this, and, and let me ask you a question. Were you always interested in owning a newspaper? We were never interested in owning a newspaper. <laughs> it's my husband and I. Um, actually, I'm co-owner with him, and mm -hmm. uh, he's not here today. But um, no, we had always, my mother started both papers in different years, and we had always told her, please, you know, sell the papers, figure out some kind of a succession plan that doesn't include us because we're not interested in inheriting or taking that over. So, um, and I have a sister who is still living, a brother who's deceased, but I, I knew that she wasn't either. So, um, but that didn't happen. My mom did not sell them and she was still in it at 79 years old. So um, I look at it as kind of a God thing. You know, we thought we had a plan Mm -hmm. uh, we knew where we wanted to live, where we wanted to retire, where we were going to be. And, um, you know, when you lay those plans out, sometimes you get a message that, hey, you're not in control here. So we we ended up back here. So and, and it's been a good experience. Right. Um, you're, you're making some change. You've been making changes, I think, from the beginning of this. And you've owned them for for about two, two and a half years now, I think. Right. Um, and but one of the changes that you're making based on the current pandemic situation that we're in is that you are going from really printing two newspapers. And if you're not familiar, obviously, the, the Nettle Creek is that we try to get this in here. Um, that's not going to work there. And um, the Western Wayne News there. Um, you're actually going to printing one newspaper. What is the reasoning behind that? Um, you know, we have contemplated what the best way is to put out county news for a long time. Um, we are Wayne County's weekly newspaper, local newspaper, and, and you can call it newspaper one or plural. Um, but between the two, we have been delivering Wayne County's local news to every uh, corner of the county. So, you know, it, sometimes we've had to make hard choices about this relates to everybody in the county, but we don't want to duplicate in a second paper because some people get both and it doesn't make, we want to, you know, make them appreciate the fact that they get different news coverage in different areas. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's, it had always been in the back of our minds, does it make sense to try to combine the papers? But when the COVID-19 situation came up, I mean, that's making everybody look at how to do business differently. Um, there have been reasons to keep the papers separate and there have been good reasons to put them together. But this is an opportunity for us, I think, to experiment. Um, everybody's, again, looking at how to do business different. And we're no exception. We're looking for ways to cut costs. Um, we're supported by advertising and nobody's advertising right now because nobody's open. And we don't know what that climate's going to look like when we go back either. When, when things finally do settle down and businesses start to open up and people go out again, I don't know how, how strong this is going to come back, how strong all of our local businesses. I hope we are powerful and strong and we, I believe we will be stronger as a result of all this, but we don't know. Sure. So that was an opportunity not only for us to experiment, but to also um, save some costs by going to one paper for now. You kind of stepped into 
the world of newspapers as a lot of larger companies were stepping out of them. Um, how, how has that kind of made you think about this? Because there, there is a cost to doing business, particularly to doing the newspaper business. Um, and, and you're finding, you're finding that out even more. So now I think, um, has it made you as an individual understand why some companies went digital only? And is that something that you considered doing? Well, it certainly has made us think about that. And yes, we have thought about going digital only. In fact, about two weeks ago, when we had four different plans in one week, like everybody did because things were changing so fast, we actually told our stores that we were not going to be bringing single site copies out and that because we were trying to keep our employees safe and that we were probably going to go fully digital shortly after that. But we did keep the door open to printing one newspaper. Um, we know that a lot of our readers are older and they're not computer uh, tech savvy. So we knew that it would be a struggle for some of our readers to, um, you know, for us to go completely online. We really had to weigh that with, okay, there's bankruptcy on one hand and there's, you know, keeping things going digitally on the other. Um, you don't get in the newspaper business to get rich. And that's um, <clears throat> the larger newspaper companies have certainly recognized that. But, you know, um, we've been blessed with a lot of really cool mentors. Um, I, you know, I said, for me, this is a God thing. And we've, we've been given a lot of gifts along the way that I think a lot of people don't get. First of all, local news is something people are still buying newspapers for. They really do want to know what's going on around them. And they really want a reliable source with honesty and integrity. And so we have strived to be that. Um, but our mentors have been some of the bigger newspapers. Um, I was asked to join the board of the Hoosier State Press Association. And as a result of that, um, I have had just some amazing um, really big newspaper agencies around the state of Indiana and beyond who have have helped us with, um, okay, this does make sense or this doesn't make sense. And historically, this is why we might have done this. And so you could look at it, but this might be an implication. This might be an outcome, mm -hmm. an unintended consequence. So um, we've weighed all that. We've, we've taken all those gifts and we have, um, you know, we've said, this is what we think we're going to go ahead and try to print for now and we may go digital in the future. And not to monopolize the conversation, but in the You're digital good. conversation, we mm -hmm. also have been blessed by another gift of Chris Hardy. I don't know if all your viewers know Chris, but he's an amazing tech specialist in our area and has an amazing background that he's very humble about, in my opinion. But um, he came to us and said, I want to help you. And I have the digital skills, I have the technology skills, and he's actually working on a master's in journalism right now because he has such a strong interest in, um, you know, just journalism and people getting good local news. Mm -hmm. So we're, we have been so blessed with him basically creating a new website for us and saving us money along the way, making it more readable for people maybe who aren't tech savvy, but it, it's much easier to use. It's got new features and he continues to add features along the way. So, I mean, again, if you um, ever think you question, you know, why you're where you are, or what you're doing, you can just kind of look back and see all these things that have been laid out before you to make it easy, easier. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'm very confident that that we're supposed to be doing this. So we'll see how we'll see how this goes. Nice. You're watching in focus on Whitewater Community Television's WGTV Channel 11. We're doing a social distancing version of that. And our first conversation is with uh, Brenda McLean, co-owner, along with her husband Jim of Hometown Media Group, which includes two newspapers. Well, one paper now, we're finding out, um, Western Wayne News, Nettle Creek Gazette, you're, you're the, the one newspaper that's coming out, and, and it just started last week, I believe, that you've gone to that model. Are you using Western Wayne News as, as the name of the, the one single paper you're putting out? We are, because it's the bigger and better known newspaper. It's the one with the most longevity. Um, 
it started in 1991, so that name's been around for a long time. We hear a lot, we're not hearing it as much anymore, but we used to hear a lot that, well, because it's called Western Wayne, people in Richmond and Centerville are not going to be as interested in your paper or the Fountain City area, but I think we've overcome that a little bit. We've been around long enough that people know who we are and they know that we are doing full county coverage. Um, We've made a marketing effort to try to explain that. So yeah, we, we have a mail permit under both names, Western Way News and Nettle Creek Gazette. So in order to print just one paper, it still had to be in that name. It could not be a fully new name. So um, while there would be some advantages to changing our name, if we do stay one paper to Wayne County News, um, it's also an expensive branding process. So um, we're looking at lots of different things with that. Talk a little bit about what you've done over the last couple of years to really kind of expand your coverage because you and I have had a chance to, to talk periodically and, and you have made an effort not to just be Western Wayne's newspaper, but be another, another choice for people throughout the county. So talk about how you've done that and, and where you feel your successes have been. Well, I think it's it's a myriad of things, honestly. Um, we've canvassed some areas. When my mom started these newspapers, each one individually, she went around, I mean, I remember with my kids when they were little, going around door to door, leaving papers on every doorstep when she first started. She didn't have a mail list. Um, she tried to buy it. It was too expensive from the person that had it before. And she just said, I'll do this on my own. And she did. So um, we've canvassed... Uh, in different ways, we've we've taken newspapers to different events and things and given them away. We've we've tried to have a presence at every festival. Um, we've tried to advertise and support a lot of um, initiatives that go around countywide. Uh, we've also created some really great relationships with um, a bunch of county. Uh, nonprofits and and uh, important communications tools like yours. I mean, we have a great relationship with you and, you know, the candidate forums that we've done collectively with the chamber. Mm -hmm. uh, and the chamber is another strong partner. IU East is, is a very strong partner. Um, I, I, I'm at risk by naming them because we do have so many strong supporters all over the county. So, and that helps too. I mean, that helps with your credibility and that helps with people spreading the word about what you're printing. And um, we've encouraged people to send us articles. We've explained, we are a small newspaper with a small staff and we can't be everywhere, but we want to be there for you. So send us stories of interest and and we put the calendar of events in our page in our papers um millie martin emory who came to us from the palladium and is our only professionally trained journalist on staff no i, I take that back rachel Sheely is also a contractor for us and she is another professionally trained journalist and we're thrilled to have them both but you know millie brought the uh calendar idea to the paper because that's something that years ago she had done she had put together and at first i said oh i don't want to take up a lot of space with that you know we'll, we'll do a half page or something and i have to just you know bow down every day and say that's that's been one of the greatest things our readers love that calendar page so it's not there now because there's nothing going on but um, right. that's a very popular feature that again people look to us as a resource to say hey all that information's in one place and I can get that so um, that's helped um, I, I just think it's again uh, some gifts and being in the right place at the right time uh, and bringing the right people on board I think a lot of that has contributed Let's talk a little bit about a couple of those gifts. You mentioned Chris Hardy, and, and we've had conversations with Chris. Chris has reached out um, to us to talk about how he might be able to help us in, in various ways. I know that he created his own site where he was pulling information from us, from you, from the Palladium, from other places, trying to put news in one place that people would go after. Talk about what he has been able to do for your site and, and give us the URL for your site in case people have not had a chance to see it. Oh, yes. I, thank you for that opportunity. It's uh, hmgccity.com. And that stands for Hometown Media Cambridge City.com. So hmgccity.com. And Chris has done things like just making it easier to read the site. Um, he sped it up. We apparently had some outdated plugins and things that he's taking care of for us. Um, 
he has made it more visually appealing by putting, uh, making it easier to put images with articles. Um, the whole site is just easier to use. He's done a great job of, you know, giving us tutorials on the back end to know how to put things on quickly. Um, he's just a great mentor. He, he knows his business. He knows what he's doing. He knows that um, how to pull articles in from different places. And yes, we're featured on his site as well. And, and that's helpful to all of us. Um, I think he did it as kind of an experiment. I don't want to speak for him, but you know, he's, he's kind of kept that low profile, but it's a great tool. As, as you thought about digital only, what has been the impact of what Hometown Media Group has or hasn't to this point been able to do using social media to get more information out to people um, quicker even? That, that breaking news thing, which to me is somewhat overdone right now, um, yeah. but, but have you all used social media more than, than what you had in the past? We have, and we've tried to use that to draw people to our website. Um, you know, we, we want to be able to um, tell our advertisers that people pay attention to what we've got to offer. You know, people, we want people to support local journalism. And so we want to be able to take them to that site to see not only the article that we might be promoting at that moment, but other things that are going on as well. So um, let's see, I don't, I think I've almost forgotten your question because I got uh, just what you're doing in the lines of, of social media now, but, but yes. you, you were considering, um, you were considering digital only. So I, digital only, excuse me. So I assume that that meant you were thinking about social media and if you're not using it to its fullest, are you thinking about jumping in deeper with it? So social media is a, is a great tool, but it's also, um, Time yeah, time consuming and it can become toxic. And um, so we're, we try to be really careful with what we put out there. And we, even in print or digital, the, the mm -hmm. news that we put out, we, we have very strong political views among our staff and we kind of banter back and forth about that. But we try to keep those out of our print. Um, so we um, use social media probably more than we have in the past, yes. Uh, but again, it's, we're not breaking news. You're right. Breaking news is overdone because anybody with a cell phone camera can take a picture of an accident and let the world know about it in a, in a minute, right. you know, so um, we're not breaking news. We never will be. If we learn something right away, we do try to get it out to people right away because we feel like that's our job as a newspaper. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you're weekly and you're all local, um, the news is usually not breaking by the time people get it from us. However, sometimes there's more detail available by the time they get it from us. So um, we'll put that out there, you know, and, and let people know. You may have heard about this, but read, read more this week in our papers. You're watching In Focus on Whitewater Community Television's WGTV Channel 11. We're spending some time with Brenda McLean, co-owner of Hometown Media Group. Um, talk a little bit about what you're doing, the, the the political side of this, and you mentioned um, being working with us in the chamber on the In Focus candidate forums, which have, have kind of been a casualty, as it were, um, of, of the COVID-19. We would normally have had um, the candidates into the studio, allowed them to be able to take questions from people, um, and you were a part of that last year. We were looking forward to being able to do this year. Um, but, but people are still looking for that information, even though the, 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 the election date has been pushed back to June. One of the things newspapers have been able to do is actually reach out to those candidates and get some detail on how they feel about some of the, um, the questions of the day. And, and those questions kind of keep changing based on where we are. Is that something that you all still plan on doing? Can you provide that information? We will, yeah. We usually try to uh, look at all the races and then we, you know, backpedal our weeks to have different uh, offices, different election offices featured each week prior to the election. And we typically send out questions and that's what we want to solicit from people. We, we can limit the word count um, so that it, it's a little bit of an advertisement for them, but we want people to be civically engaged. We want people to know more about these candidates. And so if we can be a vehicle for that to happen, 
um, we want to be a part of every opportunity. So our opportunities to work with you and the chamber to do these forums has been invaluable and we look forward to when we can get back to that. But yes, for now, uh, we'll all help fill that gap in different ways, won't we? Individually. Yeah. Individually. <laughs> Talk a little bit about your staff. You mentioned a couple of people. Um, but for those, those folks who aren't really maybe as aware of your newspaper as you would like, first of all, it, it's not just Western Wayne because you have some circulation down in Connorsville. You have some circulation um, over in the Henry County area. That paper is available here in Richmond. Talk a little bit about where people can find some of those single issue copies in case they want them and talk a little bit about the staff of people that you have and, and what they bring to, to your newspaper. Okay. Um, well, the single issues we had just gotten approval uh, for six new sites and that would have put us in 50 sites in Wayne and surrounding wow. counties. Yeah, I didn't realize it was, it was that many. I know. We were pretty excited about that. And um, But now um, our delivery drivers, we have uh, kind of, we haven't laid them off, but you know, we want to make sure that they stay safe. So for now, I'm the delivery driver. Um, and so there are only 11 sites that we have limited, limited it to during kind of the shutdown period. And um, the two probably major ones are Kroger in Newcastle and Richmond. Those are our newest, but those are where we feel like people are going to go the most. Um, the, most the ones that are the most well-known are Cutshaw's Market and um, Dollar General in Cambridge City, VP in Centerville. Um, we're in every community, Fountain Acres in Fountain City. Uh, let's see, we're in Newcastle at Kroger, we're in Connorsville at Dollar General. We are, oh, also in Richmond, we're on National Road East Speedway, as well as Speedway um, at Northwest Fifth, and we're at CBS West. Yeah. So I think I've named about all of them. Um, but again, you can, you can go to just about every community. And post-COVID, I hope we can go back to Lynn and uh, some of those smaller areas where people do, we have subscribers, so we know there's interest in our papers in those areas. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask you to talk about your staff again, but, but you mentioned a subscription, and we can't talk dollar figures here about what a subscription would cost. But I assume you're still taking subscriptions from people. Talk about how folks can connect with you um, if they don't use your site, if they want to hold a physical paper. And that's still a lot of people who want to hold the newspaper in their hands. Absolutely. Talk about that and talk about um, how they can get a subscription so they can get your paper. Okay. Well, um, you can go on our website, again, hmgccity.com. Or call our office. Um, our office hours for the phone during COVID-19, because our office is closed actually, but for the phone during this pandemic event, it is uh, Tuesday through Friday, nine to noon, and we can take a card over the phone. People can also mail a check to uh, 26 West Church Street, Cambridge City, 47327. So there, there are a number of ways, and I, I know, I'm glad you told me, I can't give the dollar amount over the phone, but I can tell you we're probably the best bang for your buck because you get 51 issues a year, and it's mailed right to your door every week. Nice. 51 weeks a year. 51 <laughs> weeks a year, okay. Right. Um, you, you mentioned Millie Martin Emery. You mentioned <laughs> Rachel Sheely. For people who have read um, the Palladium item through the years, very familiar with them. Um, but but you've worked to cover some of the other communities, and you have some people who maybe specialize in some of those communities, as well as um, the, uh, sports, which is still very big. High school sports is still right. incredibly big here in Wayne County. Talk about some of the folks that are involved in that and, and how they came to, to do that for you. Okay. Well, um, so most of the people were already here and some were employees and some were contractors that, that have been used in the past. So when we took the paper over, um, we've had a couple of different people off and on, but for the most part, they're people that were already in place. Um, so Joe Kleeman and Dan Harney are basically our Hagerstown, Fountain City, Greens Fork people. They basically have been the ones to uh, drive most of the content before Rachel came along from... Um, uh, Hagerstown and, and that area, that community. Mm -hmm. 
And um, Joe does our ad design. He is very, very creative. And I have to highlight this. This is so cool. He's a caricaturist and he has done all of the caricatures for Texas Roadhouse restaurants all over the nation. He has that contract. Yes. So the employees that you see on the wall that the caricatures have, are done, uh, that's Joe in our little hometown of Cambridge, Hagerstown, Indiana. So, and then Dan Harney is a sports writer like no other. I mean, he has the most passion for high school sports and he's just done an amazing job in the Hagerstown area. Now he is helping us to try to expand that into different areas to, to do a little deeper coverage than we have been. We've got contractors that, that do it just part time like uh, Rodney Klein who works for Lincoln High School. Uh, he's a coach and he also has tried to do some reporting for us and which can't be an easy thing to do, but he has. And then um, Chuck, um, oh my gosh, Chuck McGill from uh, Sutterville is actually a lab manager for Reed Health. And um, he's just, yeah, and he does it on the side because he thinks it's fun, he enjoys it. And we just are so appreciative of those people doing that. Um, and I hope that I don't forget anybody. Um, as far as sports go, I think that takes care of it. We've got Judy Huddleston and Joy May who have helped us get the papers out every week with labeling, um, doing our legal ad billing, um, serving as receptionists. They're just great and they kind of share that responsibility. We've got Margot Snyder who has done the manual work that we do to put inserts in the paper every week. Uh, we call her our insert queen. And then we've got a lot of contract. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of likes that name. Um, we've, we've done a lot of uh, work with Dejo Photos. It's Dana and Joetta Harris from Centerville, and I know a lot of people in the community know them, but uh, they're amazing, award-winning photographers, and they've, they've become great partners of ours. So, um, And many other contributors. Like I said, I'm scared to death I'm going to forget somebody in this uh, address mm -hmm. because we've just had so much support and so much help in everything that we do. Nice. Um, we're spending our last. Oh, I did forget somebody really you important. Did. There you go. I did. Okay. I did. Oh my gosh. All right. Jenny Pugh. Jenny Pugh is just a Milton Minute. She's also somebody we call the Hat Lady. And Jenny um, has been with my mom. She started way back when she was in high school, I think. And now she has a grown son who is a very successful engineer. And um, Jenny is our business manager. She pretty much holds things together in here. I can't believe I almost forgot to give her name. <laughs> you got it, Ian. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. <sighs> uh, we're spending our last few minutes with, with Brenda McLean, um, co-owner, along with her husband, Jim, of um, Hometown Media Group. Now, you mentioned that you all had had a, um, a, a plan to, to settle down, retire someplace else. It kind of brought you back home though. Uh, talk a little bit about that transition for, for you and your husband and what it's been like being back in this area, getting involved. I know it, at one point there was an open seat on the Cambridge City Council that you put your name in the hat for. So you really have kind of embraced being back home and being back home has embraced you. You all were winners of, of the Bob Rosa by local award at, at the chamber dinner. Talk a little bit about what it's been like making that change, coming back home, that, that whole transition for you all. Well, coming back home was not an easy decision because we moved to Bloomington with a job change in 2004. Actually, I lived down there for a while and then um, eventually through the week and I'd come home on weekends and then my husband eventually found a job in that area. And so we were there for 14 years. And um, once you've been in Southern Indiana and in the hills and in all, around all those state parks and just that, it's just such a beautiful area. Um, it's hard to come away from. It's, I mean, you know, that's still God's country where our, a lot of our heart is. <laughs> but we enjoyed coming back home too. There, it's, it's different, but it's a different kind of happiness here than what we had there. Um, so, you know, these relationships that, that we've created, we've just gotten to know a lot of people and, and by getting involved, um, you know, people kind of knew more about our work and we are honored and humbled to have received that award from the chamber. Honestly, we did not see that coming and um, that was a big boost for us. That was, that was just a, something to say, hey, we really appreciate your work and 
you know, again, we're humble. So um, what it's meant for us is I do think it elevated our, um, you know, people, people know more about us now as a result of that award. Um, a lot of people reached out and sent us notes and things that I wouldn't have even thought they would have done. It's just been a great experience. Nice. Brenda McLean, co-owner of Hometown Media Group. If people are, are trying to check you out for the first time, I know a lot of people are obviously at home and please stay home. Um, give them the website URL one more time so they can at least go and, and begin to make some connection with you and, and what your group is doing if, if they haven't yet. Okay. Well, I'll make it easy to remember. Our business name is Hometown Media Group, and we're located in Cambridge City, Indiana. So our URL is hmg at ccity.com. Okay. You're really testing my thinking abilities here on Friday morning. <laughs> now, <but laughs> we're going to put it on the screen. We'll, we'll put it on the screen in a lower third. We'll have Brian, Ryan work on that for you. Thank you. <laughs> Brenda, I appreciate you taking some time and talking with us. Thanks for everything that you're doing to, to provide coverage throughout all of Wayne County. Um, I know people really do appreciate it. So thanks for your time. Well, I would throw that thank you right back at you. And thanks for all you're doing as well. You are greatly appreciated in this community. Thank you very much. Have a great day. You too. Scheduling for Whitewater Community Television happens one week in advance, particularly now because of unexpected changes, special government meetings, press conferences, and health updates. What you see on your digital guide may not be as accurate as we would like. The program guide that appears after each episode is the best way to keep up to date with our programming. Hi, how can I help you? My daughter has a fever and she isn't feeling well. Okay, let's get her feeling better. Receive quality care within the comfort of your own home. Read Health Now, right beside you. Welcome back to In Focus on Whitewater Community Television's WGTV Channel 11. I'm Eric Marsh, Executive Director of WCTV. Glad you're able to join us for this social distancing version of In Focus as we all do our bit to stay at home. That doesn't mean we can't connect with people who can um, make things better in our lives, provide us with information, and, and we're doing that today. We had a chance just a little bit ago to talk to Brenda McLean. Right now we're talking with Paris Pegg, who is director of Morrison Reeves Library. Paris, thanks for taking some time to talk with me. Absolutely, it's my pleasure. Libraries are always or should always be an important part of our lives. I know Morrison Reeves has been for a number of people for a number of years. You all made some changes or started making changes a number of years ago that I think are really helping you and the community right now and that you really started doing more things digitally and offered downloads for people who had tablets and wanted to read that way. Talk a little bit about what made you even begin that transition a little while ago and how has it helped what you're having to do right now for the community? Sure, absolutely. Um, it has been a number of years and the, the trend to electronic and downloadable materials started in as more and more people were get, getting into the iPhone, iPad, tablet, Kindle, whatever kind of de device you might have, um, it became increasingly more apparent to us that we needed to keep up with that. And um, we had more and more people requesting that kind of material. We uh, entered into a consortium agreement with several other libraries in the state of Indiana so that we could pool our resources and offer a wider variety of titles. Um, we have audio books that can be downloaded digital, digitally, um, electronic books, magazines, um, and, and more recently we have increased the electronic uh, 
resources to include uh, video streaming, uh, different TV shows, again, magazines, music. Um, we have a couple of different um, digital resources. One is called RB Digital, uh, and that's uh, something that you can access from our website, but you do have to create your own unique uh, account for that. But once you get into that RB Digital resource and create your account, then you have access to just hundreds of book titles and magazine titles, uh, movies and TV shows, and uh, a series called Great Courses where you can learn all kinds of um, different kind of classic information type learning experiences. Um, there's uh, foreign language materials that you can access through RB Digital. Um, the other, the uh, resource that we started with is called Overdrive, and um, that you access Overdrive through our the Libby app. And we have a lot of information on our website about how you can download Libby um, just from your app store, whatever store is appropriate for your device. You download, download that app and then it's just a matter of, again, setting up your own account with your library card and, um, and then having access to a lot of different book titles, some magazines, some videos. Um, and it's, it's just a remarkable resource. And, and again, we got into it because that's the way the trend was going. Mm -hmm. uh, now that we are in the situation that we're in, we've actually expanded both Libby and RB Digital. And we are currently looking at two additional resources that we can add um, that we'll get. One is called um, Curiosity Streaming. And it's... Uh, specifically documentaries that people can watch. Uh, I've seen that one advertised on television, actually. Yeah, Curiosity Streaming. Their product. Right. Um, but it's specifically uh, documentaries, so more educational type um, viewing. Um, and then another one is Hoopla. And that one is really popular at a lot of libraries. Um, it has more uh, popular movies and TV shows uh, similar to what we would have in our physical collection, which is why we've kind of hesitated until now to add that as an option for people because it did kind of mirror what we already had available physically. Um, now that people cannot get into the building to access our physical collection, it just makes sense to maybe add that as an additional electronic resource that people can um, check out with their library card. Let's talk a little bit about how people access this. So you just mentioned people can check out with their library card. Uh, right. I, I, I haven't used mine for a while. If it's up to date becomes a question. If I haven't been in the library but need your resources now, is there a way for me to get one? So talk about that for us a little bit. Thank you for asking that question. I really appreciate that. Um, this is something that I have wanted to do for quite a while as well. And, and so it's one of those things that this is actually a, a good thing that we've been kind of forced into this situation where we now have um, an electronic library card application on our website. You can actually go to our website apply electronically, it's not immediate. I will have to say that. The best we can do is offer that electronic application. Then we have staff who actually process those applications. So you will receive an email that says, here's your library card number, here's your PIN number. Use those to access any of our electronic resources from our website. Now, what that means is that at some point in the future, when we reopen the library and we start to offer access to our physical um, collections inside the building, um, those electronic card applications, those numbers will have to be converted to a physical card um, so that patrons who've gotten their library card 
through that process, will still have to come in and so that we can verify their address and make sure that they've signed off financial responsibility and that kind of thing. Um, right now, because it's all electronic access, we don't have any liability for missing items or damaged items or items not being returned. And that, so, so there isn't as much urgency to um, have people sign that financial responsibility statement. Um, and, and we can just let them have access to, to all of the things that we were talking about previously as far as electronic books and magazines and, and streaming video and, and those kinds of things. Now, if you go into the uh, website and you click on the icon that shows where you can get a library card and the staff person processing that application discovers that you already have a card um, they will simply email you that information and say oh you already have a card here's the number here's the pen you can go ahead and use that we're we're waiving a lot of the restrictions right now um, some people may have a library card that for whatever reason had some um, fees assessed that didn't allow them to use the card. We're waiving all of that right now so that anyone who has a library card and, and for whatever reason hasn't been able to use it, they can use it now through this, this time that we're, uh, the building is closed. You're watching In Focus on Whitewater Community Television's WGTV Channel 11. We're speaking with Paris Pig, director of Morrison Reeves Library. Um, your staff during this time, um, how are you working with them? How are they working with the public and how can the public interact with them? You actually have phone hours where folks can help you. We do. We, do. We, um, we implemented phone hours a week or two ago. It seems like maybe a month or two ago. I'm not exactly <laughs> sure. Um, but we do have staff that are scheduled to answer the phones. They are doing that from their homes. We, we have the technology that allows us to forward the library phone number to individual um, homes, cell phones, whatever number they're using when they're scheduled to, to provide that service. So between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., and 6 p.m. and 8 p.m., Monday through Friday, you can call and talk to someone, a library staff member who can answer your questions, direct you to additional resources, just help you find the things that you need um, while we're not able to, to talk to you face-to-face -face in the building. Um, just today, we issued initiated another service that we call live chat um, you know some of you are probably familiar with that feature on other business websites where you're looking at a website and the little box pops up and says oh hello <laughs> yeah you. how can I help you how can I help you um, we've we've added that to our website as well so from any of the pages on our MR website MRL website, uh, you can access the chat box and a library staff person can assist you through the live chat feature. Um, that is available from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Wow. It's even even more hours than what we were actually open, um, but we have staff who are um, providing that service 12 hours a day, six days a week. That's great. Thank you. Talk about resources that are available specifically for those parents who are now finding themselves teachers and teachers who may not have had e-learning in their schools, but are having to do that to get through the rest of the year. How is Morrison Reeves able to help them out? We have a variety of resources, and the one that I'm going to, to speak most about is something that we actually added um, a couple of years ago at, at the request of some of our local teachers. Um, the World Book Online resource was very, very heavily used by teachers and classroom and student assignments, uh, they relied on that quite a bit and had a lot of use. 
Um, but there were some budget cuts and they weren't able to renew their subscription for that resource. So we decided to add that through the library so that teachers and students could still use that valuable resource. And I know that World Book Online has added a feature to their product that is specifically for lesson plans and activities and things that teachers can use with their students. Um, but the beauty of that is parents can use it with their children. Because parents who've become teachers without any uh, pre-knowledge of what that looks like, um, yeah. can go to that World Book online resource from the Morrison Reeves Library webpage. They have free access to it. Um, I'm, I don't know for sure if you have to have a library card or not, um, but if you do, it's just, again, use your library card or make sure you apply for one online so we can get that number to you. And then you have access to a, what I would call one of the better um, educational resources that, that we have. Um, there's also a lot of um, a lot of people are doing YouTube videos and things that you can just kind of search and and discover if you have a particular topic that you want to work on with your child. I think it's really important, especially now that parents have become teachers, allow your child to kind of drive that education process. Get, help them discover things that they're interested in. And I can say that not just as a library director, but as a former classroom teacher, I think it's really important not to get caught up in this and really being able to teach specific things and stress out about all of that, but, but let them guide that so that they stay interested and that they can really um, drive that and, and learn from from those experiences. You're watching In Focus on WGTV Channel 11. We're talking with Paris Pig, director of Morrison Reeves Library. We've we've mentioned phone numbers and chats and websites, but we haven't given any specifics. Why don't you go ahead and, and give the URL for people who, who don't know it and, and the phone number where if they want to do that chat between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Monday through Saturday, but nine, that's incredible hours. Why don't you give that information out? Absolutely. Our website is mrlinfo.org. So mrlinfo.org is our website. And our phone number is 765-966-8291. Again, you call that number, it will be forwarded to whatever staff person is scheduled to be on phone service for that time of the day. Phone service is from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and then again from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday. Uh, but our online chat service through our website is 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Paris, uh, libraries have always been different based on what their communities are like. Talk about how that continues or doesn't continue to be the same. There are people reading online and doing some other things. Talk about what libraries are like right now and as you converse with other library directors. We have regular conversations with libraries all across the state. And um, I would venture to say three times a week with statewide conversations. I meet with my leadership team uh, at least once or twice a week. We just continue to look at the best way to provide services for our community. We've heard some discussion about other libraries that are offering different kinds of services. There are some libraries who offer curbside service where you can actually call and they'll bring your things out to you. Um, there, there have been examples of libraries who maybe have um, hours by appointment. 
those are all things that we're looking at doing at some point in the future. But we very strongly believe that as long as there is a stay at home order issued by the governor, we need to be very careful about what kinds of services we offer so as not to encourage people to violate those orders that have been put into place. Um, we really want everyone in our community to be safe. We want everyone in our community to be healthy. Um, so we want to do what we can to make sure that we are um, providing services that don't cause people to congregate in groups that, that shouldn't. Um, I know there was a concern expressed about having our Wi-Fi available. Um, we do have free Wi-Fi access outside of our building in our parking lots and on the grounds around our building that people can come to use. And I think that might be especially important as the um, students go back to school and have to do e-learning kinds of things that may not have internet access at home. Um, but, but there was a concern expressed that, that, was encour that we were encouraging people to gather. So we, we really have to pay attention and balance what we're offering against what the, the guidelines are for safety and health concerns. Um, we certainly don't want people to gather. In we had envisioned more of, you know, you can individually or stay in your car or whatever, access our Wi-Fi from our parking lots. Um, but, but we just have to be very careful about um, encouraging people. And so even once that stay at home order is lifted, we will put into place a kind of phased in plan where we, we will probably most likely not be open for people to just rush into the building and, and get all the things that they've been missing. Um, mm -hmm. We'll not have uh, in-person programming still for an extended period of time. Um, but we will have in place a plan where we can little by little add in possibly curbside service once the stay at home order is lifted or possibly uh, people being able to come into the library by appointment so that we can limit the number of people who are there at the same time. That will also then allow us to, to clean between times that people come into the building. We have to look at what safety precautions do we need to put in place for our staff because our staff is our absolute number one resource. So, I mean, without our staff, we don't have library service in this community. They are the best, absolute best. So, we want to protect them as well. So, what does that look like? We have to, we will be spending some time uh, coming up with that plan and, and having things ready to go when we're allowed to do that. Paris, we're down to our last minute, but I want to give you a chance to one more time give the URL and the phone number and the hours that people can call and, and reach somebody morning, afternoon, as well as your chat. Absolutely. The phone number is 765-966-8291. Those phone service hours are 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., Monday through Friday. Okay. Our URL is mrlinfo.org, and our live chat hours are 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Monday through Saturday. Appreciate everything that you and your staff are doing to continue to provide resources during this time. It's an invaluable tool to the community and, and what you all have done in, in just in changing and going with the times over the last few years is, is proving out to be a, a very important feature that you all have added at Morrison Reeves Library. Thanks for the time and the effort. Thank you very much. A library is a place filled with stories. Some you can find on the shelves, others in the racks, and even more on the computers. But the best and most important stories at the library aren't the ones that live here, but the ones that visit. The girl who found the book that inspired her to think big, 
and the boy who learned how fun it can be to think small. The boy who found a group of friends who like to play games offline, in addition to online. The boy who learned that animals and vegetables can talk. And the woman who never gave up on her dream of talking to them. The woman who found the newspaper article that helped her piece together her past. And the man who found the job that would lay the foundation for his future. We're all writing our own story. We can help you write yours. Come and add your story. First Bank actually opened in 1887, so we've had a long legacy in the community. Libraries have always been the heart of communities. And recently, with all the changes with the internet and all the access that people have, libraries have had to find a new path. And Morrison Rees has done a great job of updating and bringing themselves into a, a new era where people are coming in for more socializing and for events and for different things other than just to ch always check out books. Morrison Reeves Library opened their doors on July 29th of 1864. We used to be just a place that people would come to get books or learn about um, certain subjects or to do research uh, or family history research. And now we've embraced you know, all of the electronic resources and databases that are out there uh, in the electronic world. We consider First Bank Richmond a good friend. They're there to help us sponsor our signature events. They say, hey, I need an army of volunteers. We have a big program, such as our fantastic fall festival that happens in October. It's trick-or-treating throughout the entire library. We have carnival games, um, as well as candy giveaways. And First Bank is always there with an army of volunteers. We love that the philosophy that they have of bringing people together for fun, for reading, to get them in to see all the books and all the various things that they have to offer here. And so it's been a great partnership for First Bank. My special thanks to Brenda McLean and Paris Pegg for being guests on our first social distancing in focus, and a big thank you to Brian Harris for working to make my file something at least a little bit viewable. A couple of quick reminders, you can still register to vote by going to indianavoters.com, and also please join me Fridays at 2 p.m. on WGTV and Facebook Live for another Ask the Doctors with Dr. Thomas Huth of Reed Health and Dr. David Jetmore of the Wayne County Health Department. Your questions are taken during the program. We'll be back next week with another In Focus. In the meantime, stay home, stay safe, and I wish you well. This broadcast of In Focus is being made possible through the support of Reed Health. Reed Health, right beside you. And by First Bank Richmond, with eight locations serving Wayne County. First Bank Richmond and you, doing great things together.